Hey, legend. Episode 239, Noob Sparrow Podcast. Welcome back. My name is Isaac or Shrek. I host the sucker, interviewing spearfishing experts and authorities and characters from around the world. Today, it's 10 characters on a recent spearfishing course over on Stratty. Uh, had some absolute frothers, including uh, Rod from Rocket Kit, who you might know on YouTube, and he even made a video to um, sort of accompany his experience over there. It's an absolute pleasure ho- hosting him and and nine others. Uh, even as a sport for instructors as well, had uh, Tom Sandstrom and Bree Heaney come over, and uh, Jeepers, we had a good time over there. Uh, I've just come back from running the fourth course, and uh, so this is the third one. And uh, some really solid takeaways. I think if you are learning to spearfish, then you're probably going to really enjoy hearing the the process, the learning process of some of these guys um, going through the spearfishing journey, maybe for the very first time. And uh, it's pretty cool just hearing sort of how their days progress. It's a two, uh, it's an interview conducted over two different days so you'll sort of see as we segue there from the first day into the second day hope you really enjoy it hey guys in the sydney the greater sydney area the kingfish cup is coming up i hope you're excited for that uh check out all the details up on usfa.org.au that is a a frothing comp and it's nearly here i'm hoping to get um simon trip and craig from the adreno store on to gig out on serioli leilandi aka the the yellowtail kingfish we're going to talk all about hunting them and making the most of the the season i guess they get down there in sydney and this is what this competition celebrates the kingies coming in in numbers and uh jeep is the reverse tile fish for cooking as well and particularly like the raw dishes I, I absolutely love a kingie hey um next in in a fortnight i've got a really cool interview coming up with the the mackay spearfishing the neptune spear and dive couple from the mackay spearfishing store up there uh so i hope you're here for that but uh again like the courses are absolutely going off at the moment i've got an intermediate spearfishing course coming up november 2nd or 5th if you can come there's only two spots left i would encourage you to do so I've got the Australian spearfishing champion, Tim McDonald. I've got the Queensland State spearfishing champion, champion Trevor Ketchian. I've got Tom Sandstrom back up from the Coffs Club and uh, some amazing underwater photographers. We've hired a boat uh, to come over as well. And there's only 12 students and there's probably going to be a whole bunch of us over there just uh, really enjoying this intermediate and geeking out on all of the, the wicked lessons from guys uh, like Tim Tom and Trevor, I'm going to really enjoy uh, sitting in amongst it and hopefully just emceeing it and kind of watching these guys lay out what happens. Check the, If you guys want to check any of these out, go to spearfishingcourses.com.au. Also, uh, I've got another beginner course coming up at the back end of November. There's also only two spots left on that. Um, there's two brothers from the Becoming a Bowhunter podcast signed up for that. I'm really excited to... See what a couple of bow hunters think of the spearfishing experience, and we're going to probably hopefully record some podcasts there and geek out on sort of the parallels between the two worlds. And maybe you're curious about bow hunting, so that might be cool to put you onto those guys as well. So check that out the Becoming a Bow Hunter podcast. Talking about podcasts, the Stalk Outdoors podcast with Andy. Uh, Jeepers, he's an absolute character. Some really good interviews on that podcast at the moment. And uh, if you want to check out and hear maybe some a few more of my stories from my journey uh, in the next couple of weeks, I believe my episode's going to go live up there as well. So check that out. Hey, guys, let's get into today's interview. Stratty, again, it's key takeaways, froth moments while learning to get better at spearfishing with the third course on the Stradbroke Spear and Crew. Here we go. Shop for your spearfishing gear at adreno.com.au in store and online. You can use the code NoobSpearo to save 20 bucks on any purchase over $200. Why would you shop with Adreno, I hear you say? Well, let me lay it out. Flat rate shipping, $9.99 on all orders. Hassle free returns policy, Australia price match guarantee shop now pay later with afterpay fully sick brands huge obnoxiously ginormous range of great spearfishing gear made just for legends like you go adreno go pro don't be slow shop massive spearing gear at adreno i'll stop shrek that's a no no but seriously shop with the noob Spiro's longest running partner adreno Head to adreno.com.au online or in-store at their huge mega stores. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 20 bucks on any purchase 
over $200. I was left with an empty cooler after missing and wounding a bunch of fish with a shoddy spear gun. A work colleague urged me to speak to Naptonics, and I'm so glad I did. Without Jerry and the Naptonics team, I would have kept missing bulk fish and coming home to my wife empty-handed. Now I can focus on slaying monster hogs and groper and covering the deck of my boat in blood. Never buy a shitty piece of equipment again. Shop Neptonics.com, use the code NOOB10 to save 10% and go spearing with confidence. Jerry says if we sell it, we believe in it, we trust it and dive it. Shop Neptonics.com, free shipping for the lower 48 for orders over $199 and you can save 10% when you use the code NOOB10, N-O-O-B-1-0 at Neptonics.com. Hoorah! G'day Noob Spiro community, uh, you're back with the Shrekster, I'm out on a course, it's the uh, the North Stradbroke Island uh, beginner spearfishing course, it's my first one of sort of the new coming on summer season and I'm spoiled to have 10 absolute legends um, participating as well as three instructors, two of whom I've never worked with before, um, so it's, it's really cool, um, I'm going to, we're going to get around and I'm going to get some of these guys to introduce themselves, so we'll start off with Scott. G'day everyone, uh, my name's Scott Freeman, um, pleasure to do this course with Shrek and the rest of the crew. Um, I come on this one because I've um, been a bit of an amateur Spiro for a few years now and uh, wanted to increase certain aspects of my game such as breath holds and breathing techniques just to better myself as a Spiro and a, and a freediver and um, got to say it's been a Pretty good surprise, pleasant surprise, and it's worked out really well. Cool. Ben? Yeah, g'day. Uh, my name's Ben Gardner. Um, I I came on this course to uh, mainly to do more of the spearfishing side. I, I did the free diving um, a few years ago when I moved up to the Sunshine Coast, um, and, uh, yeah, I fell in love with that, and obviously... Um, over the last couple of years, sort of um, been watching many videos and and whatnot, and and following spearfishing you know channels, and it's just resonated with me. So I thought I'd transfer across and see what that's all about. I'm not a very good spearfish fisherman, but um, yeah, I've done it as a little kid and uh, haven't done it since. Um, so I'm looking forward to to tomorrow to um, put everything that we've learned on this course together and seeing how how it all comes about and seeing whether we can go further with it. Awesome, Ben. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, name's Tony Finch. Uh, newbie to free diving and um, hopefully spear fishing tomorrow. Uh, come on the course. My wife got sick of me going fishing and catching nothing. Uh, so she thought if it went underwater, I might be able to get something um, a little bit bigger and bring it home. Um, so far, awesome course. Um, Awesome people we're, we're here with. Uh, both three instructors are really good, but also the the other um, participants have been really good. So, should be looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, uh, I'm Rod Pacitti. Um, yeah, no, look, I, like Isaac said, there was a spare spot uh, towards the end of the course and I jumped at the chance because I guess spearing is something that I, I've done often but never taking it to the next level or, or even just even the basic level to learn the basics and build up from there. So there's a great opportunity to sort of come and, and it seems like very spearfishing based as well, not just free diving. So I'm definitely enjoying that because it's something that obviously I want to build the skills up to sort of just do deeper dives and, and just keep going with it. So yeah, no, it's been really good. Rod, you're a famous YouTuber, are you? <laughs> Uh, next, next, next person is not. <laughs> uh, guys, if you're not aware, um, go check out Rocket Kit on YouTube. Rod's an absolute gentleman and a legend. Does a lot of top water stuff, a lot of solo island missions as well, and um, he's just a rad human being. Great guy to have on the course. Uh, hey everyone, my name's Kobe, Kobe Sears, and um, I'm 15 years old. And my parents got me this course as. Um, a birthday present and they kind of sprung it on me I didn't tell them about it but uh, when I heard about it I thought it was really cool and I'm, I was excited to come on this course because I wanted to 
uh, take my spiff shing to the next level and beat my friend. Joseph, if, if you're listening to this, I'm going to be better, be better than you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so just be better at things like breath diving and, or breath holding in um, depth. So, yeah. Go, bro. Um, I'm Iris. I came on this course to fill knowledge gaps um, in my spearing um, and, yeah, just work on my breath holds and um, different breathing techniques um, yeah and connect with other people and see see how other people catch and cook and uh, yeah so far so good <laughs> thanks Horace no who we got next we got Lee in the corner uh, yeah my name's Lee uh, I've just come on this course to learn a bit more about uh, breathing techniques um, Anything as well to get out and do some spear fishing with some people that know more than me. Um, always interested in learning new things, uh, working with more experienced people and picking up on things that I may not pick up on myself, spear fishing by myself. Um, yeah, it's been a great course, great people. Um, highly recommend it to anybody else that wants to come. Um, got a lot out of it. Still got tomorrow to go. Uh, Learned a lot to do with free diving and tomorrow learning a lot more about uh, the actual spear fishing side of things. Yeah, g'day, my name's Tom. I, um, I came on this course because Isaac has really good reviews on Yelp and I do what Yelp says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Ray. I came on this course to hopefully help address some of my equalising issues, which seem to be making great progress on at the moment and hopefully you'll get to some better depth soon. Hi, my name's uh, Joey Staley, uh, Isaac's little brother. Um, yeah, I, th I think I'm, I'm a bit better at spearfishing than him. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what, watch out. Nah, uh, in all seriousness, uh, it's real inspirational seeing Isaac um, slay fish for years and yeah, I've, I guess I've just followed a few YouTubers and various people underwater and love love um the ocean myself so yeah always wanted to well the, the past year or so wanted a spearfish so it's quite cool to uh be able to have a go at it awesome cool. all right guys next question is a little bit of change of pace it's um who was someone cool that you dive with today and why was it cool to go diving with them like pick out some of the things that made you think Oh, I really like that. That's something I'm gonna do, or it's uh, or they achieve something cool, or you know, um, just something cool you observed. Just a cool experience from diving with someone new, maybe. Scott here again. I think uh, it was a few people to, to to mention, but I'd say um, in general, I think that the favourite person to to dive with today was um, a young fella, a fifteen year old Cody. Yeah, Cody. Kobe, sorry, mate. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> I was pr pretty impressed, especially if you pulled that two-minute breath hold. That was um, that was yeah. solid, mate. <laughs> Congrats, like 15 years, and you're already pulling that off. So good on you, mate. Anyway, that was very impressive. Love it. Yeah, I had Kobe as my dive partner today, um, and he was definitely by far impressed me, like with your with that breath hold today, and then also the fact that you've come on this course. Your mum and dad put this on you. Um, I think back to when I was 16. You're 16? 15. 15. I would never have come on a course like this with a bunch of adults I don't know. Yeah. That's a big thing to do. So 100%. fair play. They're, they're good on you. Um, yeah. and, and in general, like, all of you have been nice to dive with. Like, I've dived with most of you. And, um, yeah, it's just been a lovely experience. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, Tony back here. Um it's a pretty tough one, Shrek. Like when you look around the room here, everyone's pretty uh, pretty good to dive with. Yeah. Um, but today, Julian, uh, pretty special. Seeing him crack over was three minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, and he's holding his breath. So that was pretty amazing, especially for a newbie with 30 seconds. So, yeah, well done, Julian. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, so I, I, well, well, we got buddied up um, and I saw Julian do that three minutes as well and I was impressed I was I was struggling and uh yeah so that was really cool to see but um yeah and then I got buddied up uh with Iris as well and it was really cool to see 
like we dived all the way down that break wall and we didn't really see a whole lot of big spearing fish. But what we did see is a lot of like clownfish and anemones and nudie branch and all kinds of stuff. Like it was really cool to see someone just as interested in just enjoying the snorkel or the free dive mm. and seeing some cool stuff rather than just it wasn't all about the big fish at all really mm. towards the end it was a little bit <laughs> but um but it was all about just enjoying the dive and seeing some cool stuff and experiencing what that sort of side had to offer it was really nice yeah sick thanks rod uh, it's kobe um i think the a cool person that i've i dove with today was probably ben because he's accomplished some pretty cool things in um just free diving some cool depths and uh breath hold times and um yeah like there's people here that have some pretty big followings which is also pretty cool because i'm just like pretty young and it's cool to interact with these people you go brie <laughs> <laughs> well i enjoyed diving with everyone thank you very much for putting up with me and listening to anything I asked you to do on the dive boy I today. better introduce you Brie like. Hi. <laughs> so we've got Brie here from Underwater Culture on the Gold Coast she's an absolute legend an instructor and uh, has an amazing sort of um, community that she's built with Blaze Parsons on the Gold Coast uh, an absolutely phenomenal instructor in her own right and uh, we've been spoiled to have her on this trip I think everyone's kind of gained some nuggets from Brie so I had to make your introduction oh, for you, you there, Brie. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've really enjoyed um, spending time with everyone today. Everyone's brought something new to the table. Um, and even if anyone had any barriers today, you really just like didn't let it get the best of you, which I really enjoyed. And yeah, I'll jump on the bag wagon and just shout out Kobe because we had a great afternoon and you did a double sesh and you just backed it up and yeah, you dive really well and your technique's awesome already. I just wish I was that cool when I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Iris, back on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, some, of my, some of my highlights were Probably, yeah, diving with Rod and Bree. I think both both those people have, um, yeah, just such great experiences in the water, really comfortable, a lot of curiosity, and are both really humble and um, easy to approach. So I think it's nice when someone's really good at um, their chosen sport, but then also is really open and accessible and, um, yeah, just wants to go... Like, use it as uh, a connection point, I guess, as well. I haven't really changed up partners too much. Um, I worked with Rod today doing the breathing techniques, which uh, I much appreciated. Um, I never really timed myself holding my breath, but I was surprised when I did two minutes. Um, yeah, it all comes down to the techniques that they show you. Um, everybody else... It's good meeting and, you know, finding out their stories and their experience. Um, yeah, just meeting everybody overall. It's been Lee, you, you got pretty bitter when other people were buddying up with your, your bromance partner, Scott. <laughs> um, there was a, a lot of jealousy I sensed. Um, can you comment on that? Oh, me and Scott have got a relationship where he does the rounds and, you know, <laughs> when he, when he's, when he uh, feels like he's filled his cup, he comes back. It's <laughs> 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 excellent, thanks, Lee. Uh, um, my my favourite buddy today was Julian, I think. He smashed it. He... Um, he got on the boy and did all the requirements immediately um, with no no dramas. Oh, he had one equalisation drama, but that was very minor. But, yeah, he, he looked like a seasoned pro. That was very enjoyable to watch and easy to instruct because you don't have to tell him anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray here. I was partnered up with Joe Ash. Um, he seemed to come along really well. Um, both helped each other out, so yeah. Yeah, no, back at you, Ray. Um, you pretty much fathered me the whole day. I was <laughs> making a making a meal of everything, and um, you just correct me the whole day long <laughs> in a real gentle, gentle fatherly way. Um, mad shout out, bro, to the man, bro. <laughs> uh, that was good, Joe. All good, guys. Um, next time, this round, I'd, I'd love for you to talk about an area where. 
um, you've sort of discovered something that you want to improve. So it might have been through a failure. It might have been through a struggle. It might have just been through seeing someone else do something that you want to do. So talk about that if you can. So uh, I, I guess the, um, coming into this course, one of the big things I wanted to do was maintain um, my time on the bottom. And I think I accomplished that to a degree today, but um, I definitely was made aware of the the ability, I, I guess is the best way to put it, of the human body to take on more than it can actually, than it mentally thinks it's capable of. Mm. Um, so watching other people just perform the tasks was was a big confidence booster, as well as a, a learning experience because... And, it's it's one thing to see it uh, see it on a blackboard and written down, but when somebody's willing to back it up and actually go down and perform the task at hand, it's uh, it's it's eye opening. It's, it's it's really good. Um, well, for me, I mainly it's uh, as I said the other uh, last night. It's it's more I'm new to the spearfishing scene. I've done free diving, and so I'm quite comfortable in the water like that. Um, for me, it's more becoming comfortable with species identification size and and then also like using the gun firing it retrieving the spear putting it back in I was cack handed today so I'm hoping it's not the case tomorrow but um, yeah all these things are sort of very new to me so um, I'm looking forward to sort of you know improving on that and, and moving forward. Freediving for Spearfishers at howtofreedive.com will help you to extend your breath hold, understand your body better and put you in a better position when you actually get to go out spearfishing. This program is not for noobs as this program is for people who have some diving under their belts and understand some basic spearfishing safety, but it's perfect for spearos who want a guided, easy to follow and complete program with videos, a clear process and a set goal. The five minute free diver works. Get started for free and see if it's for you at howtofreedive.com. There's a tester there. Use the code NOOBSPEARO, N-O-O-B-S-P-E-A-R-O to save some money if you do decide to purchase. Check it out at howtofreedive.com. Free diving for spearfishers, a fantastic way to prepare, especially if you've got a big trip coming up. Get to that five minute mark and it does translate to your diving at howtofreedive.com. The Freediving Manual is a video manual that contains absolutely everything that I would teach on one of my freediving courses. Everything broken down video by video so you can effectively take a freediving course at home. The manual is perfect for any Spiro who wants to brush up on their freediving knowledge or get up to date with all the latest freediving safety and performance knowledge. Great news, guys. Adam Stern has made his freedivingfamily.com courses available at a discount for the Noob Spiro community. If you get on freedivingfamily.com, use the code Spiro, you'll get 20% off any course. There's a bunch of sick courses on there. There's an equalizing uh, stage one. There's an equalizing advanced techniques um, video there. They're two of my absolute favorites. If you have any problems with equalizing, go to freedivingfamily.com. Get Adam's course and use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course. Check it out at freedivingfamily.com. I just love a functional and simple spear gun that I can trust when I pull the trigger. Kill Shot Spear Guns utilize the finest of kiln dried Burmese teak. Kill Shot Spear Guns also combine American made parts and fine craftsmanship to bring you accurate, reliable, and simple spear guns that you can trust fish after fish. Get $30 off. Any Kill Shot Spear Gun at KillShotSpearGuns.com. Yes and amen, Uber. That's $30 off American-made performance spear guns at KillShotSpearGuns.com. I'm really sorry for this terrible accent. Brought to you by Ed Martin at KillShotSpearGuns.com. One thing that I've found in common with all of you guys is like, you're also teachable. And it's friggin' awesome to be around. Like, the worst thing in the world is to have students where they don't 
listen to you. They don't think that what you've got to say has any merit and they just keep doing the same stuff. All of you guys are really open and you're not afraid to look a little bit foolish to learn stuff. And I think that's massive, eh? Like, especially as you get older, like I I went back and learned jujitsu like a few years ago at, at sort of 38, 39, and I was so bad. And uh, and I'd, I felt embarrassed all the time, but I just, you, if you just persevere and you, and you keep learning and trying and stay humble, you start learning. Yeah. It's not a fast journey sometimes. Like, there's quite a lot involved with spearfishing. So, hats off to you, Ben. Like, um, you're an amazing freediver, and I think you got the spearing in you for sure, brother. So, awesome. Tony. Uh, Tony back again. Um, 38, 39. It's relatively young, Shrek, uh, when you look at it. But, um, <laughs> How old are you, Tony? How old are you? I'd like to think I'm a young 52. Uh, <laughs> young 52. <laughs> what did I accomplish today? Not much, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow. But what did you learn, though? What, I learned what? shitloads, mate. But taking it from theory to practical wasn't so uh, so good. But it was just to um, reiterate what Scott said, it was really awesome to see other people take the theory to the practical and then take it beyond that. So, um, yeah, testament to the, the trainers, that was really good. Awesome. And let's see how we go tomorrow. All right, cool. Love it. Well, I, I secretly was hoping someone would bring it up more specifically, but I actually can't remember the exact question. But uh, but I but I definitely would biggest, appreciate biggest it. learning biggest learning <laughs> yeah like with, well what they were saying about um just seeing yes things on paper and like what in just getting details on what the body can do and then actually getting into the water and actually seeing it put in practice and then even not doing so well at some of it sort of opened my eyes up to it. And then I had to think about it. And it, it's a thing that was a big part of the learning process for me, just sort of going, oh, geez, I didn't feel very uncomfortable then. Or maybe today's not my day, but then trying to improve on that from that point. So I think, uh, yeah, I think there was some good gains there from something like that, just sort of getting it wrong and then sort of having someone to point out what I'm doing wrong and then being able to fix it has actually been really good. Cool, brother. Kobe again. And um, I think uh, one of the biggest learnings I had today was like the ability that I can push myself even though I don't think I can like have how other people have said um watching someone do something that you can't do it just it makes you want to push yourself more and try to accomplish goals that you haven't previously been able to achieve uh like today I recently got a um like a personal best for my breath hold which which is pretty cool so yeah one other thing from you, Kobe, I really liked was a bit of wisdom. Like part of the thing with being a young fella, a young man is, and I think any man, we're all a little bit like we can get carried away in ego traps. And a couple of times today you experienced discomfort when you were equalising and you were smart enough to slow down and try and clear before you carried on. And that's a huge thing because a lot of people try and push through the pain and it's not, it's not a good idea. And having a long breath hold – comes through time in the water and experience and um, you kind of rocked with what you had and you're pretty smart about it. So a hats off to you at 15, man. Thank you. Bree, <laughs> did you learn anything today? <laughs> um, I guess I always do learn stuff, even if you guys don't think that we are always learning on these sorts of things we are um, and I am always thankful because you give me the opportunity to go back to the start and to think about things that maybe I personally rush through or find a simple alternative or route to get there when really I understand that it is like a lot and it's pretty overwhelming sometimes when you're doing your first kind of entry-level freediving course to wrap your head around so I always appreciate it and you never have to apologise for making us kind of go back to the start and thinking about the basics. And mm. I really enjoy learning how to help someone get there. So, yes, I did learn and I'm grateful. Cool. Cheers, Bree. Iris. Iris is back. <laughs> um, <laughs> Iris everyone's, is back on the Everyone's mic. kind of got their own intro as it's yeah, going, like going it. around. I like it. Um, I think my biggest learning was... Uh, it kind of relates to when I was teaching. I was teaching... Um, illustration and with a lot of the students their biggest barrier was uh, when you're trying to draw kind of having this narrative in their head that they can't draw and um, I think when you're spearing it's really easy to kind of decide that something's too hard or it's not for you um, just being aware of that programming and then also being aware of it when you're diving like Brie was kind of talking about um, 
I'm calm, I'm peaceful. My narrative was kind of like, I'm a fish. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I think everyone's got their own um, inner monologue that's going on and then just tapping into that and changing it when necessary is really important. Awesome. Cheers, Oris. Um, mine goes back to the breathing side of things. Um, I've never done anything, any sort of spearfishing or freediving with any, you know, overly experienced people. It's just always been a fun hobby with me and a couple of mates. Um, yeah, the thing I've mainly learned is getting outside your comfort zone. Um, you know, learning all the CO2 gases and the blood oxygen uh, that, you know, when your body's starting to try and push to push that CO2 gas out and breathe in more air, um, the fact that you can push yourself so much further. Um, I used to mainly, you know, just cruise along and go to small depths in uh, lots of coral sort of areas that are only six, seven metres. Um, but now, you know, in deeper areas, just telling you, you self that you know you can push yourself further if you feel like you need to go up you know you can push yourself a lot further than you actually think you can mm, mm. especially if you've got a alert buddy like scott on the surface ready to massage out those aches and pains every time i come up he's like 17 meters that way oh no <laughs> well, not after this course he's so not you get to, you get to call in and dob him into the noob spirit community buddy <laughs> the Stratty Alumni Group on Facebook. You you can name and shame. Take a photo of him 17 metres away and we'll all blast them for you. Um, I, I think the biggest thing I learned is just to, yeah, as an instructor, you're constantly learning new ways to, to work with people and um, we're constantly learning from others and you run into new problems all the time and you got to think on the fly how to address an issue and, and every session you learn something different and learning from Bree and Trek, they're different techniques to do different things. It's it's enjoyable. Uh, I'd say probably the biggest thing I've learned is head position when diving it makes a huge difference. So, so describe that problem. Uh, if your neck's too far back, you can't equalise. Makes it very hard and very painful going down. So, what's so, the trick you're using now to keep your head in a neutral uh, trying position? Trying to just tuck it in, tuck my chin in a little bit more. Nice. And yeah. Awesome. Seems to make a big difference now. And you saw some progress today? A lot of progress. Awesome. Still got issues, but getting there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Ray. Cheers, brother. Good honesty. Yeah, I guess um, starting with kind of very little knowledge to um, having, you know, quite a lot um, in the short space of kind of two days uh, or one and a half. Um, yeah, there's so much takeaways. Um, I guess specifically, yeah, like... Um, equalizing um big issue for me um but yeah it's it's all a new experience for me so yeah so many uh new things but yeah everything from a 10 step um breath well yeah breath hold before you even going down um yeah it's it's all quite massive and um obviously time in the water will give me a uh, better experience there yeah love it awesome joe um, guys, some fantastic takeaways there. Um, I'm going to come around shortly and ask you all pretty much what you frothed on the most today. So were there any moments that sort of stood out to you um, in your own diving, whether it's a breath hold, whether it's, um, you know, some technique adjustment, or whether it's a, a moment seeing something or getting down to a new depth? It's kind of your victory, but it's your froth moment for the day, whatever that was. Um, for me learning techniques um it was really nice to um lean on brie and tom so much um two very capable instructors and just being able to share around all of the teaching and not have to sort of try and do everything myself was fantastic um i'm not saying i've always done that i just tend to have an overdeveloped sense of responsibility and just um these guys immediately i feel like they're very competent um great communicators and so it's easy to hand off um, teaching tasks to them and we work I feel, I feel like we work pretty well as a team that was cool and it's good for me to just be able to learn to just relax a bit because um, when when you know when you're an instructor and you're feeling wound up feeling nerves feeling tension 
um, your students get a sense of that too and then they can't relax. So it's kind of like my responsibility to try and be as relaxed as I can be so that everyone else has a good time. Um, from a froth point of view, um, I have to say the Kobe moments were pretty – pretty friggin special like on the first dive we were doing free immersion i was like all right kobe uh this is kind of how the technique works for free immersion we're going to pull ourselves down the line we're going to equalize you know every pull we're going to stop we're going to equalize and um we're going to stop at five meters and we're going to have a bit of a hang time because this is just our first dive mate and then um <laughs> he's just away he went and then he was gone like he was down at eight or nine meters before i grabbed his fin and i was like this is a warm-up dive mate <laughs> and uh but he he just did the the depth requirements with absolute ease and he had such a great attitude he listened to everything i i said to him and um i think ben and him worked really well as together as well and saw immediate improvements when i saw feedback when i gave him feedback on the next dive and both of these guys were the same. I saw them immediately take it on. And that's pretty cool as an instructor, like having teachable people. So very cool. Froth moments, guys. Tell us about yours. Uh, froth moment. Ugh. So I think the, the thing I'm frothing on the most is um, is the improvement. Is it, It's a contrast to the way I used to dive and, and breaking those bad habits, which, um, which I've developed over years of no formal training, just, you know, just some dickhead going out there and, you know, getting in the water and trying to shoot as many fish as he could. When along with that comes the bad habits. And when you taught, when you taught the, the, the correct way to do it, the contrast between how deep and how far and how, how long you can hold your breath versus what you were doing before it's uh it's unbelievable to to, to to see the difference i came here and last night we were talking and i was like you, sh you reckon i'm going to be able to pull a 90 second breath hold and you know after after doing it with the rest of the group and um and and concentrating on the techniques they teach you 90 seconds was a breeze yeah. but you know you told me to if i go do a 90 second dive two days ago phew, not a chance so i think that's my biggest froth moment mate love it scott awesome brother um, for me, uh, well, obviously I've had a, a bit of a diving hiatus, so I haven't been in the water for the best part of eight, well, 12, 18 months. And I was thinking this afternoon, it, for the last time I dove to beyond 10 metres uh, was back 2020. So I've achieved things that I wasn't expecting to achieve diving straight up again after you know all that time um so yeah i'm, I'm pleased with that i uh, still got the breath hold still can dive beyond 15 meters and the other was kobe again obi-wan <laughs> <clears throat> turning back again for the last time hopefully um, <laughs> moment. let me see it wasn't, it wasn't too many of those today shrek but um, we did make a big leap forward from 30 seconds to almost <laughs> two minutes in breath hold. So for a newbie, I'll, I'll take that. It's about all I, all I can walk away with at the moment. But we will see what tomorrow brings, big fella. Love it. you got a great attitude, Tony. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Tony definitely does have a great attitude. I saw him go from that 30 seconds to a uh, two minutes and it was, yeah, it was cool just to see how, like, it was such a difference because it was, it it was one after the other as well. Like, so it's not like, yeah, and then just having that confidence and just going, all right, and having another crack at it was pretty That's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was he a, massaging it? Did he yeah. get a roll on no. the massage? <laughs> no. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Leo. Well, I'll leave it, leave it to the professionals, the shoulder <laughs> massages. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> He's only Scotty's massage. massage. <laughs> he gets his improvement. He used to be in the closet. No, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Do you guys want the mics? <laughs> you go, <laughs> no, We're just going to have a rap battle <laughs> here. Yeah, it's on. It's on. It's on. <laughs> um, I've, this is going to sound really superficial and silly, but I was frothing on my new wetsuit, actually. Like, I was, I kept floating around. <laughs> I know, like, if I'm being honest, like I, was, I was just floating around. I was like, man, look, I've, like, and the hood was keeping me so warm and it was almost keeping me even more buoyant. I was just floating around going, I haven't been this comfortable in the water for this long. Just And I was just waiting 
till like it was my turn to do stuff. And I was just floating around going, this is great. <laughs> this is really great. And then, yeah, and then uh, I think I even said like a, a few times, you guys looked at me like going, what's he doing? He was just floating past with this <laughs> satisfied look on my face. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and like I was, I was just like, man, it's just this wetsuit. I feel so good. <laughs> so anyway, I, I really liked uh, free diving with everyone else as well, but the wetsuit's pretty great. <laughs> You're right, it did sound superficial, but very funny. Uh, what sort of wetsuit? I'm sorry, Rod? Oh, I, I literally picked up the wetsuit from uh, Adreno yesterday because I realised I didn't have a proper wetsuit, so I went and got it. I think it was an Adreno tuner in the end. But nice. was, yeah, feels great. Loving it. <laughs> is this a two-piece high waist or? or uh, it's two-piece. It's high waist. It's not like long johns. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it feels super comfortable. And I, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, and it was the only size they had there. So I got, I, a, I got lucky and it you, was. Did you out. use the new Spirit discount? Or did we I did deal, actually. Or? Oh, I got nice. my 20 bucks well, off. Well, yeah. Right. No, I was, I, and I've, <laughs> I've not got it before and I was a bit disappointed. So yeah. Oh, legend. The podcast is, yeah, it's trained me up. Cool, brother. <laughs> That's Kobe again. Um, a bit of a froth, froth moment today was um, maybe uh, probably freediving because I, I found that pretty enjoyable. Uh, I've never really recorded how deep I've gone and I think I probably underestimated myself a lot. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool that I was going to 13 metres and stuff. And um, I used my weight belt for the first time today and that made a really big improvement and I thought that was... I found that really enjoyable. Yeah, nice. Awesome, Kobe. Brief froth moment. Oh, for me, it would have to be uh, our first little session this morning doing our breath holds. Um, I just had four legends uh, I was working with, and you all smashed it, and there was nothing better than surprising you all that you all passed. And uh, just seeing that look on your face when you just thought you couldn't do it and how easily you all smashed it. So it's very rewarding. Mm. We won't tell them about our, our dirty Never. strategy we learned from Adam Sellers. <laughs> His Iris back and on I'm the mic And I'm back for the final time. <laughs> um, I think my biggest froth moment was, um, yeah, just the sea life that we came across and the anemones and the clownfish and seeing, are they eggs on the anemones, on the outside of the anemones? And they're kind of glowing? No like idea. The, that's a smell? That's a smell? The glowing, <laughs> I'm going to, I'll look this up, but I was very excited about that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. It is funny when you notice a new thing with mm. marine life, like, and, uh, you know, you're in a foreign ecosystem, so learning how it works and the animals that inhabit that, that you know, and they all serve dif different niches and, mm. like, it's very interesting to observe and when you see new things, it, like, quite often it, it, like, has a compound effect and you learn four more things mm. right off the back of it, so that's cool. Yeah, well, they do have a symbiotic relationship, which is cool, but I'm keen to add to that uh, very small knowledge base that I have. <laughs> nice. Cool. Uh, my, fr thro thro my froth moment, um, apart from getting back and having that hard solo, uh, was just being out in the water because obviously um, I couldn't equalise properly uh, today had issue with one of my eardrums, um, so I couldn't do all the required tests. But uh, <coughs> just being out in the water. Excuse here, mate. Ju just being just, out just, in the water. Just rewind back and add some truth you to that statement, finish, mate. mate please. I'm going to take the mic off, Scott. He's going to be dangerous, I reckon. Sorry, Lee. Start carry beatboxing on, boxing or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. As I was saying, just out in the waters. Um, I always love being out in the water. Um, yeah, being underwater so I don't have to listen to an old mate over there. But, yeah. <laughs> um, I had a super frothy moment today and it might do me for the year. We um, we were doing some rescues today and I was lucky enough to get mouth to mouth from Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> How good was the breath, bro? Yeah, yeah. I didn't make much dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I'd have to say my froth moment would have to be the whole thing at the moment. Um, just learning more, meeting new people and getting pointers off everyone. Mm. Love it. Good stuff, Ray. 
Yeah, um, one of my frost moments was um, me and Ray have been battling a bit with equalising and he kind of broke through his kind of um, just depth today. It was pretty cool just seeing that for him. Um, and just seeing Scotty just zooming around like a child, I love, love seeing that. And then <laughs> just seeing a few grey Max being caught while we were um, just doing the statics, that was, yeah, it was cool, cool to see. No one mentioned the flathead, eh? Like, um... We were doing we were doing some dynamics and um, who spotted them first? Who's nah? Someone else spotted one and then we spotted two. Scotty, I think maybe. Was he? We found a couple of flatties. Like we saw the first one and it was legal and we were excited. And then right next to it was a tank and um, it was right next to where we kind of did our dynamic swim and like. A lot of people do a freediving course in a swimming pool. We did it in an ocean environment, and it's actually a pretty special place to do a course. You, you're you probably not going to break your static breath hold record, but you can still relax, and you've got the sounds of the ocean. And then our dynamic we did over sand, and there was quite a lot of life around. We had dugong, uh, sorry, not dugongs, we had uh, wobbygongs and, uh, and flathead, and then there were kids out on a jetty, like, smashing grey mackerel and... You know, the, the, like there was thick with bait around the jetty. It was a really cool environment to be in. And um, I feel like we're a bit sport with this location, with kind of what we can do on this course. And um, But it's always about the people you do it with. And it's like you come away, no one knows each other from a bar of soap. and um, But everyone's on the same vibe and the same level. And it's been absolutely cool. I've loved this course. And I'm looking forward to uh, one more day and a half with you guys. Um, if anyone's interested in doing a course, check it out. Spearfishingcourses.com.au. Bunch of chip, uh, trips and courses up there always being updated. So check that out. And um, I'll have some of these guys' social medias linked up, including the illustrious Bree from Underwater Culture on the Gold Coast. Uh, I have to mention Rod again from Rocket Kit on YouTube. He's an absolute star. And uh, Tom Sandstrom from down there at the Coffs, Coffs Harbour. Bl- what's your club club called? Co- Coffs Harbour Blue Water Freedivers. Check that out because um, those guys run their members through um, spearfishing and freediving courses. So check it out. Um, so my one of my younger brothers is doing a run from Newcastle to the Gold Coast at the end of next month. They it, they sadly had one of their good friends take his own life, so they're doing a, a like a awareness slash fundraiser for Beyond Blue. So if anyone out there would like to support them, head to Run for Eden on Instagram and check it out. Buy a shirt or donate. That'd be amazing. Or go for a run with them if you're on the east coast. The sweet, sweet sound of equalising on your way down a hunter fish. It's not that sweet though. In fact, most of the time we don't even notice those sounds until we review our GoPro footage. But sometimes though, a sticky eustachian tube, an uncomfortable forced EQ or ears that just won't clear can derail your dive day. Sounds like you might need Ted Hardy's Roadmap to Frenzel course, available at noobspero.com forward slash Ted. Equalise instantly and effortlessly using Ted Hardy's Roadmap to Frenzel. If you go through his EQ program and Ted doesn't teach you to Frenzel within 30 days, he will offer you a full refund. Make your EQ problems a thing of the past. Learn more at noobspero.com forward slash Ted and use the code noobspero to save some moolah. As soon as I say anything about freediving safety, I can hear the eye rolls from across the podcast. In fact, you're probably thinking, but Ted, I've never had a problem. I don't push myself. I'm in tune with my body. I know my limits. What is 100% true about that statement is you can always say that statement unless you died from a blackout. You've probably heard of someone in your local waters that died from a blackout and they used to be able to say the same thing and then they blacked out and they died and they can no longer say that. That's the way that argument works. My name is Ted Hardy. I'm the founder of Immersion Freediving and my goal is to do more to stop fatalities from shallow water blackout than any other person on the planet. I never liked the idea that the information on how to not kill yourself while spearfishing was gated behind the paywall of a freediving course. What if there's no instructor within 200 miles? What if you can't afford a course? What if you can't get time off work? So sad, too bad, you just don't get access to the information needed to dive safely? That's why I created freedivingsafety.com. It's a free course that will teach you how to reduce your risk of having a blackout and teach you how to save your buddy's life if they had a blackout. 
Within one month of launching the course, I had a Spiro tell me he saved his buddy's life just from going through the course. His buddy had an underwater blackout. He was able to recognize the signs. It was able to save his life. I'm not the free diving police. You can dive however you want. My goal is to provide access to information to anyone who wants it that will make you better aware of the risks and give you the tools to dive safe so everyone makes it back to the dock every single time. Dive safe out there. It's not even that hard, especially when you can learn for free at freedivingsafety.com. This podcast is brought to you by aqualite.com.au. This is the best solution, bar none, for staying hydrated in the ocean. If you're a Spiro, it's an absolute no-brainer. It's a game changer. If you're doing extended trips and the cramp starts to set in and uh, the old body's telling you, hey, that's enough, just get hydrated and it will save you a whole heap of woe. It's a groundbreaking product that can help you to stay hydrated. It's got low sugar, it's less acidic than other options on the market, it's rapid absorption, help you to maintain performance. Dehydration of just one to 2% can affect your mental and physical performance by up to six or 7%. And as when you're spearfishing, you can tell when dehydration is starting to affect you because the equalization goes out the window. Get Aqualite at aqualite.com.au. It's scientific rehydration that Spiros know and trust. I know because one works there, and that's why we've set up this discount code for you. 10% off when you use the code NoobSpiro at aqualite.com.au. Check it out. Australian-made hydration products tailored for Spiros and a whole bunch of other people that suffer from dehydration too. But check it out at aqualite.com.au. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 10%. Do you smoke all your trout in the head as well, typically? Like, are you pretty good on your trout? Yeah, I usually get them in the head. A little, yeah. a little. When I first started, no, nah, it was all over the place. But yeah. I have you take a shot unless I can Have you worked out that you don't shoot trout when they're moving? Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I've got a bit of a technique down with trout. I reckon they're probably my, my you know, go-to species. Let's, let's oh. let him introduce and then you can start Sorry, with the trout. No, no, no. You're having a conversation. It's fine. <laughs> this is how the Noob Spirit podcast normally works. Like, people just chat and I rudely interrupt them and then we start an official podcast. So, awesome stuff. Um, Scotty, with his... Um, we were just talking about his goat fish ceviche. <laughs> people don't need to know the it's details great. about the goat fish ceviche. <laughs> Needless to say, it was a... A top dish served at, a, at another Noob Sparrow course, so well done, Scotty. Um, everyone enjoyed the morsel that they had. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go around the group and we'll talk about, I'd love to talk about highlight of the day, um, something you really enjoyed today. We'll start with Tom, one of my fellow instructors on the course. Shit, I need time to think about this. All right, I'll go with my highlight. Um... What did we do this morning? I need a thing too. <laughs> what did we do this morning? <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah, no, we had four guys left over from oh, yesterday yeah, okay. that, um, that were unsuccessful with their dives off the line yesterday. And so we got them out and a lot of them had problems with their ears. And we managed to get 2.5 of them through out of the four. Uh, one guy missed out very narrowly on his constant weight. But... All of them like improved absolutely out of sight. I know I'm stealing Bree's thunder here. She wanted to talk about this too, probably. <laughs> Her and I were out on the boy with these four, and just awesome to see like so much passion and so much effort and improvement went into it. It was huge for me. Um, Tom, Tom. Oh. Julian just ran into a pole when he was walking around the corner. I'm going to chuckle to myself. I asked you why. I actually stopped on time. Um, no, my, my highlight was this morning we were doing some target practice and um, and Scotty's like an ADHD child. He cannot keep him still. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we were lining up and everyone's doing their target practicing. And you turn around, where's Scotty? And I was like, Scotty, come and have another shot. And he's like, right, I'll be right there. I just got to do something with his flathead. <laughs> he's taken off around the corner and shot a flathead. Um, <laughs> yes, he's enthusiasm. Yeah, keep, it, it's been... It's been Pretty good fun to watch. Lots of laughs, so thanks, mate. Appreciate it. And then, thanks for the um, goat fish ceviche and the smoked flute fish. <laughs> How good was the smoked flute fish? That's though? good. Hey, don't ruin my highlight. 
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I think my... Oh, well, I, I, I don't know if the flute fish is a highlight, but it was pretty good. It was definitely up there with things I, I'm happy I tried. But um, has anyone heard about, like, my wedding experience? My wedding suit? It's been pretty... <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. You've all heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> You sound high, like a like a, a guy who's spruiking a mattress. Yeah. We're doing <laughs> the best night's no, sleep no. of my life. <laughs> no, well, anyway, it's not the wetsuit today. I think I I don't know if there's this is probably a low light more than a highlight, but I was pretty pumped and I hadn't really seen much of worth shooting and I'm I finally <laughs> dove down <laughs> and I saw a pretty respectable flathead. It wasn't a monster, but it was very it was good. It was good. It was very legal. And I got down there and just before I dove down um, Isaac had just said, "Hey Rod, do you want to have a go at my roller gun?" And I was like, "Wow, that's that's a pretty cool offer." And I haven't seen any fish anyway, so it's very unlikely that I'm going to shoot it. But I was pretty excited to get my hands on it, so I dove down, and there's like a pretty decent flathead just sitting right in front of me. I was By the time I too. stretched, it, was that? I was filming you. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely a low light then. So. But I stretched out. By the time I stretched out, it probably was like 30 centimeters away from the gun, and I fired, and it missed <laughs> and I, I don't know why it's a highlight but it was it was good to see a fish it was exciting and it was a fun story and it was just Memorable a good way to top off the trip because there's been lots of fun going on and it was just a, a nice fun story it's probably more fun that i didn't get it and we get to laugh about it so that's a highlight for me nice. yeah <laughs> thanks rod was it static was it sitting still? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was the dumbest it, flathead after ever. After I shot, it didn't, it still didn't even move after I shot. I, <laughs> like, I tried to grab the shaft <laughs> off him and just punch it through manually through his head. <laughs> That's how dumb this thing yeah, was. I remember turning around and I saw you, I was like, <laughs> uh, looking at you, like, uh, can you believe what just happened? <laughs> yeah. yeah well, probably the highlight today was actually doing the PB, hitting 10 metres, and low light would be losing the snorkel. <laughs> oh, I've got another sorry. highlight. Day. <laughs> I tried to lose the snorkel and then he didn't let me. Four talk times. about talk through your line dives. Uh, so the line dives were pretty good. Um, definitely equalising a lot better. Definitely good help from both teachers. So that was really good. Um, but yeah, just a good experience and definitely learning what I thought I used to get down to was nowhere near it. <laughs> so 10 metres is quite a fair distance. Well done though, Ray. Yeah. Awesome yeah. effort Thank today, you. mate. Horace is not on the mic. Oh, not on the mic tonight. Not on the mic tonight. Yeah, just following on from the trend, uh, I'm with Shrek with that one, just uh, running the four guys through on their line dives today was really rewarding. Um, you guys had serious persistence and dedication to try and achieve that 10 metres. So it was really exciting to see uh, how you could slowly and confidently get there, which was really rewarding. And progress over the last few days with everyone, it, be it with line diving or spearfishing, has been just like out of the ballpark. So it's just been really rewarding to watch you all. Tony here again. Um, Tony here again, guys. <laughs> just like to say... Pretty good day at uh, Emory Point today, uh, all round. Uh, good hanging out with all my mates here that I've just uh, met in the last two days. And didn't see a, a fish worthy of shooting, but we did get a dead snapper. <laughs> Joey, it was the biggest snapper I've seen for years, mate. It was awesome, but it's on to see all the flesh. So. But yeah, we couldn't miss. Three, uh, three trainers, love them. Uh, Accomplished a few things today, not quite where you wanted to be, but uh, yeah, well done to the three trainers, it's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Uh, for me, uh, I guess the highlight today was uh, target practice. I hadn't fired that gun, that rife, um, and I got all targets each time, um, so I was quite pleased with that. And. Yeah, the second dive this afternoon for me was a lot more comfortable. I was probably a little bit dehydrated in the morning. So, um, yeah, this afternoon's dive I felt a lot more comfortable and then practiced more of the hunting and that sort of started to come in because I've come from free diving. So I sort of swim along and look at everything. Um, now I've, you know, sort of learning to swim down to the bottom and then look and then sort of slowly hunt that way. So, yeah, I guess for me that was that was my highlight. 
Love it. Cheers, Ben. You all in? Can you just give us your Yeah, you all in. Give us your whole yeah. 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 so It'd be just good nice. to hear from you, yeah. you all in. No, no go no, share. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, my highlight today was probably shooting a fish I'd never even heard of or seen until today, which was a flute fish. And um, yeah, I was found it pretty fun just exploring and things like that and doing the target practice because I got to uh, work on my aim a little bit and yeah so that was my highlight today. Who's your, what's your mate's name? Josh is it? Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> Shout out to Joseph. <laughs> has Joseph shot a flute fish mate? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Jay you missed yeah. out buddy. Sorry, like, yeah. yeah all good. Nice Kobe. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah today it was good to um, get a run through of how to put together a spear gun um, and also uh, my first time using a roller gun and that was a good experience, a lot more powerful than my rail gun. I've got one band, that's a two band roller gun. Need a bit more strength trying to load the thing. But <laughs> was that my roller? Um, when we were doing sure. target practice? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yours? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a good gun. But, um, Bit more than what I need, I think, for my yeah. little fish in the shallow three meter waters that I swim around in. No. But, yes. No, you follow Scott water. out into the ten meter stuff. He's he's <laughs> hundred meters ahead of you, but. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Scotty? He's... Oh, he's there. <laughs> Here I am. Sorry, mate. I thought you were over that way. You're normally too like, like a lot yeah, yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's he doing right next to him? Uh, I've been copping this this whole bloody course. They're rag not ragging on me for that. They're ragging on me for my bloody your my little goat fish. Hey, tell you tell you what, mate. At least my goat fish had a tail. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all proud of his parrot. But he didn't didn't have to mention the fact that the thing didn't even have a tail to swim with. Couldn't swim <laughs> away. So yeah, be proud of that one. Anyway, about, about the same length without the tail. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been great. Um, I don't know what my highlight would be. Highlight tonight was watching. Shrek suck an eyeball out of a tough fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's just been a good course, a good <laughs> bunch of people. Um, oh. Yeah, looking forward to getting out again maybe in the morning if uh, if I decided I'm not too hungover. But, yeah, see how we go. Yeah. I like your chances. Um, learning opportunity slash a way we can improve this, this trip for others in the future, like... Um, it's seriously easy to run a spearfishing trip here with legends like you guys. Like, the energy's contagious. You're all here for a reason. You're all having a good time. Like, it's pretty easy to facilitate, to be honest. Um, so, but I'm always looking to improve. We're always looking to improve as instructors. Um, either a learning opportunity for yourself personally, something specific, whether it was like a tucking your chin in, whether it's like, smoothing out your fitting technique whether it was getting on the bottom before you started hunting whatever your big sort of takeaway was from the day or an improvement we could make for the course something something that you think that we could do to make this experience better for everyone in the future look i think the course ran pretty well my biggest complaint would be um for about an hour and a half this afternoon the wind blew from the southwest and it was a little bit cold so if you could do something about that next time i'd really appreciate it <laughs> oh this is coming around a bit quicker than I have time to think. Um, look, no, I, I think the course has been pretty amazing, like, especially for where it's at. Like, this is an unrealistic um, suggestion, but the course could be pretty cool if there was some access to another spot. Like, just, just, well, I guess it's different because we've had a bit of a, um, a rough run when it comes to visibility. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know how you would fix that actually. It's a pretty it's a pretty tough one because it's it's not realistic to split groups up or anything like that as well. Mm. But um no, nah, look I yeah, no, nah, I think it's been it's a pretty 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 satisfying and, and comprehensive kind of kind of gig. I've I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's a fair comment and I think like when you do have rough visibility like we've had I think um, having access to a boat and going out further, it does juice up the price when you start adding boats into the mix. Yeah. For the intermediate course, we're using a boat okay. and we're getting yeah. away from the wall. 
Um, but having said that, like there'll be a day of rock wall diving, and then there'll be a day out in the boat, so it'll be kind of a mix for the intermediate course. But the price is is a lot more expensive yeah. than uh, than our beginner course. But it's a, it's a fair call. That's I was about. To, yeah, but well, what you've just replied is that's a very fair call as well because it's, it's probably an intermediate kind of stage anyway. Because every, anywhere you go from here would be out into the the ocean off a couple of the bigger rocks out there anyway. So no, that's that's. There's the solution right there, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, nice. No, no, it's good. Mm. The other thing I want to do is open up some more locations. So we're talking about running some up in Harvey Bay, um, even some further north, like we're doing some uh, maybe some camping trips in the southern Great Barrier. Oh, that's the one, um, And we already run an annual trip off the Early Beach in the Whitsundays there aboard the ProSail vessels. So slowly adding these things into the mix. But, yeah, for sure, good feedback, bro. I think the course has run pretty well. Don't think we really need to improve too much. It's just the visibility was pretty crap. So unless you got some way of fixing that. <laughs> what about for you personally? Any improvements for you oh, personally? Vast improvements on everything. So it's been really good on depth, equalising, learning how to do it properly and just slowing everything down. If I do feel pressure, just stop, let it equalise, then keep going. Nice. So. Cool. Um, I guess for me, obviously, I'd love for more ladies to join us, but that's something that we do have in the works. Um, but I think it's something everyone should keep in mind for all abilities and all experience levels because, yeah, it's a really, really fun time and you kind of cater for everybody on these trips. So it's a perfect location as well. Tony here again. And maybe the last time for tonight. <laughs> um, I just want to reiterate with, uh, with Bree, like, if, if I can come here and learn as much as I did in two days. Um, any woman can, for sure. Um, but yeah, Shaggy, learning mate. curves. <laughs> okay, there's not, there's not much you can do about visibility. You can't do anything about what what's out in the ocean today because uh, you don't have control. But if you're a beginner, um, I think what you've set up here is, is pretty cool. Um, gives you a lot of confidence mm. and a lot of security around what you're trying to do and, and what you're learning. Uh, you don't feel too vulnerable, uh, which it en- enables you to, to push yourself a little bit harder. So, cool. yeah, I wouldn't change too much, mate. It's pretty good. Nice chest, Tony. <clears throat> yeah, uh, for me, um, basically, um, I, the, I found the course fantastic. Um, I, I came purely for the spearfishing side, um, and um, I've learnt a heap. You know, like before, I wouldn't have gone out. I, I'd have probably even, you know, say I'd go out on my own in shallow water. But, um, yeah, I would um, definitely, you know, I, I've learned a lot. And um, you can't change anything about the weather. Like, the weather is the weather. So you guys, had hats off to you weather. three for putting on such a good course. You've done fantastic. You've all been, like, really good patient with everyone here with everyone's abilities and you know things that are going on so like i've been really impressed with the way you've handled it all hats off to you cheers man i've been really enjoy. i've really enjoyed this course i thought it was really good and um i think one thing that was great for me was like learning that one if you like get on the bottom and you just stop and slow down all the fish will just come to you and you don't really have to do much. Mm. And I, once I started doing that in my dives, I found it was a lot easier to get closer to fish and have a look around and see what's, see what's around. So, yeah, so that, was, that was a good uh, tool. Sick, Kirby. Good takeaway. Uh, yeah, also really enjoyed the course. Um, a lot of good people, positive people. Um, the instructors have been great. Uh, every question that I've asked has come back with an answer. A lot of years experience between the three of them which is great um yeah felt no negativity no drama or anything on this course so it's been fantastic um the biggest thing i've uh learnt in this course would be just getting down to depth quicker um the instructors gave me a you know a lot of feedback uh mainly holding my chin into my chest and um yeah, I find going vertical down with my chin in to my chest and on the way back up um, just makes a huge difference. Um, once you start to, you know, put things into play, 
um, you start thinking a bit more on your techniques, yeah, it definitely helps. Constructive criticism. Um, I don't have anything negative at all to say about the course. I think uh, the best aspect of the whole thing is that it caters to a bunch of different skilled, differently skilled people. So it's not, it's not sort of a course that you just need to be a, a, a complete beginner or a intermediate advanced Spiro to, to take. It's something that um, any, any skill level can come on and, and learn and, uh, and grow. And that's what, I, and that's a testament to the instructors and the and the course format. I think um, I think they've done a fantastic job, and congratulations because I've never even heard of something like this before, and I'm glad I did it, and I feel like I'm a better Spiro for it. Got a sweet deal for you today, guys. Go to freedivingfamily.com. And learn from Adam Stern and a select team of experts on different disciplines. The Freediving Manual is a digital freediving course. One that you can do at home, at your leisure, whenever you've got time. The course contains absolutely everything that a freediving instructor would teach on a freediving course. The digital courses are broken down into a video format and they contain everything that a freediving instructor would teach on a freediving course. We have beginner freediving courses, intermediate freediving courses, and advanced freediving courses for those who are working on diving deeper. The freediving manual contains all the safety information that any Spiro could want. Thanks, Adam and team. Love it. Use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course at freedivingfamily.com. Again, that's the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course. Check it out at freedivingfamily.com. I just love a functional and simple spear gun that I can trust when I pull the trigger. Killshot Spear Guns utilize the finest of kiln dried Burmese teak. Killshot Spear Guns also combine American made parts and fine craftsmanship to bring you accurate, reliable, and simple spear guns that you can trust fish after fish. Get $30 off any Killshot Spear Gun at killshotspearguns.com. Yes and amen, Uber. That's $30 off American made performance. Spear guns at killshotspearguns.com. I'm really sorry for this terrible accent. Brought to you by Ed Martin at killshotspearguns.com. Hey, buddy, how's your breath all going? Really? You struggling? I do too sometimes. And that's why I've got something perfect for you today. I think you'll agree with me when I say that maintaining or even increasing your breath hold is a struggle, especially when you're not slaying fish every week. But what if I told you there was a way to train yourself easily and do it safely? Freediving for Spearfishers at howtofreedive.com will help you to extend your breath hold, understand your body better, and put you in a better position when you actually get to go out spearfishing. This program, Freediving for Spearfishers, is not for noobs. Uh, it's for people who have some diving under their belts and understand basic spearfishing safety. But it's perfect for Spearos who want a guided, easy to follow, and complete program with videos, a clear process, and a set goal. The goal is a five minute static. And check it out, freediving for spearfishers at howtofreedive.com. You can get started for free, do the taster, and if you do decide to purchase, use the code NOOBSPIRO, N-O-O-B-S-P-E-A-R-O, to save some money if you do decide to purchase. Check it out at howtofreedive.com. Lots of kind words there. Um, I'm going to bring it back, back to... Um some frothy fun, I think. Um, I want to hear best meal of the trip, preferably a seafood one. Um, and then also, like, the funniest thing maybe you've seen the whole trip, like something that made you smile or outright laugh. Um, for me, best meal, can't really go past Yuli and Ceviche. It was a bit of a... Bit of a I'm a bit disappointed he hasn't jumped on the mic. He's not a first language English speaker. Um, but if he does make a comment, I hope he does, because um, he's been a great part of this trip. Really good energy in the water, out of the water. Fantastic meal. Can't shine him on enough. Funniest moment, um, Jeepers, Scott and Lee have had A-grade banter. I can tell you what, um, these two are like an old married couple, and um, just the way they take the piss out of each other and just laugh and enjoy each other's company is fantastic to be around. Absolutely love that. My... Frothiest moment was Julian again shooting his first fish this morning. Um, 
that was pretty epic. Always stoked to see a first. And my funniest moment was that dickhead too. <laughs> we dived together all morning and I must have picked his snorkel up half a dozen times. <laughs> he was trying so hard to lose that thing and did at one stage and I'd spent a good minute on the bottom searching for it before I found it. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, his clip didn't work. It wouldn't stay behind his strap. I don't know what he was doing, but <laughs> we, we were both chuckling the whole, the whole morning. Over so him and his snorkel. Do you think it was a Romanian-made snorkel keeper? It could have been a Romanian. Yeah, yeah. They, um, their snorkel keeper is the, as good as their rugby team. <laughs> <laughs> Some smack talk there trying to draw you out, Julian. Yeah, no, the smack talk has been pretty funny, especially the shoulder rub talk. I definitely enjoyed a bit of that. Um, not physically. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, look, there's been a lot of good moments, actually. And, I, oh, for first meal, uh, like the ceviche was definitely the most refined and, and and definitely fancy and really enjoyed that. But all the meals, actually, tonight, I think I I enjoyed all the meals tonight the most because they're all, all the catching cooks. It was nice mm. to sort of see even just species that that I what would not normally target and just seeing them sort of cooked up, especially that, like the flute fish was pretty... Bizarre but delicious and like totally edible. And then uh, probably one of my the funniest moments is actually the way Tony introduces himself on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely I'm definitely flopping over that. <laughs> and I can't wait because he's he's up he's up soon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, really. Um, yeah, I've got to say, Julian ceviche was beautiful. Um, hadn't had that style of ceviche before. Um, uh, really nice. Um, my frothless moment was probably today, um, seeing Tony kind of mungle his way down the rope um, to 10 metres. So yeah I, I, yeah, I was really amazed at just such perseverance. Um, yeah, ah, cheers. I uh, definitely have to say all the fish tonight was pretty good. The ceviche was definitely on top. And I'll probably have to say Shrek's wife's muffins and <laughs> the <laughs> brownie. Brown I sugar definitely brownies, demolished yeah. a lot of that this weekend. Yes. So oh thank you for those. Uh, frothiest moment was probably just seeing other people come back with fish because I wasn't successful. So nice. Um, I guess for me, my favourite dish was uh, also the brownies because I think I ate four slices today. <laughs> um, otherwise, <laughs> yes, I form. totally appreciate <laughs> the um, dedication to your craft tonight with the uh, Peruvian ceviche. I think it's really, really exciting when someone really uh, introduces something new to the group and uh, it went down really well. Mm. Uh, my frothiest moment was actually today, Ray, on the line. Just seeing you over the last couple of days really take your time and not push yourself to achieve something, but break it down into small manageable tasks every day, just gaining a couple of metres until today. Uh, it was really rewarding to watch and I know how stoked you are. Uh, and funniest moment is literally every time we've got a couple of nesting curlews at the bottom of the house <laughs> and for some reason it just yells at us <laughs> and it's just like the way to make a big bunch of uh, blokes stop and have this little tiny bird yell at us every single time we come too close to the nest. So kind of like that and watching everyone just dance around this tiny bird yelling. It's uh, time for our favourite part of every interview. Yeah. Tony here, guys. Yeah, it's uh, Tony again, and apparently going round again. Okay, Neil, I've got to say, everything tonight was, was amazing. Um, nothing better, straight out of the ocean, straight onto the plate. It's pretty cool. Uh, Julian's uh, ceviche. Um, ceviche, yeah. I've never had it before, but it's pretty, it was damn nice. Um, frothiest moment, again, Seeing uh, Ray uh, hit the 10 metre mark and come up, he was pretty stoked and loved seeing other people achieve their goals, so it was pretty cool. Um, funniest moment, pretty hard to top. Uh, Lee and uh, Scotty's romance there with the, the, the <laughs> calf, uh, calf romance. rubs, and I think um, poor old mate over here is a bit jealous. <laughs> uh, anyway, maybe tonight. A lot <laughs> 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 Ah, <laughs> uh, mate, um, for me, the 
Oh, well, yes, the ceviche. Sorry, mate. I have to say it again. Um, that was... Very... He's blushing. He's blushing. <laughs> uh, well, mate, you take credit. It's It was very, very delicious. Um, frothiest moment. Um, I thought the frothiest moment today for me was seeing everyone come together around this fire and I took a couple of pics. And Who brought the fire? I don't know. <laughs> Some mad dog. Um, <laughs> Some mad dog. Um, I thought that was a really good moment, and so I took a picture of it, seeing everyone sitting down. I'll know, put that I, in today's show notes. So it'll be noobspirit.com forward slash. I'll just do like mm-hmm. S3 because this is the third course I've run. Yeah. And I think that this 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 yeah. time is like one of the cool things about the trip. I, I think that's what's super, mate. Mm. You know? Yeah, it brings us all together, and we're all sitting around this fire, huddled up. It is a bit cold after a, a few days of diving, and everyone's sort of achieved their goals. Um, and yeah, I think that's what it's all about. This is why I've come on this course. Uh, the funniest moment for me, well, again, Scotty, you are hilarious, <laughs> um, <laughs> mate. I, I don't know. There's something about you got a good energy. Yeah, keep it up, mate. The best meal tonight was um, probably the fish. I really liked that. I got to, <laughs> I got to try all different types, all different types of fish and styles of fish I didn't have. I had smoked fish, which I never had. Uh, um, tusky. I had some magpie mowong. I uh, flute fish, and um, I did have a little bit of ceviche. <laughs> that was pretty good. Was it the best? Or? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you're out. Yeah, <laughs> the throffiest moment uh, was probably watching over the weekend the. The curly couple just kind of, at the start, it was very aggressive to everyone and then as we've just been around, they've kind of just settled down and even today, uh, Scott was, or tonight, Scott was hand feeding the the one on the nest, which is pretty cool to see. And um, I don't know, I don't really have a funniest moment, but everyone's just really, everyone's just got a good energy, you know, they make pretty good jokes and yeah, we all just work, to get, well, work well together. Who's got the best jokes? Gabby. And who's got the worst jokes? Yeah, pass my ball. Be- oh. Best worst? <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh! oh strong, oh, strong oh, agree. Oh, I, I shoot for it. I shoot for it. Love it. Yeah, yeah I can't remember all the moments, but um, <laughs> the three the three things that you yeah, said. But, uh, <laughs> I, I just enjoy, you know, at the end of this course, like everybody's worked a, as a team in this house. Nobody really knew each other at the start and everybody's mm. jumped in. Julian, pretty sure he's going to move on to a MasterChef course after this one. I've uh, been cooking up a storm the whole time he's been here. Um, yeah, funny moments. I won't say Scott because I have to deal with him a lot. <laughs> um, just, uh, yeah, everybody's got good energy here. Um, everybody has a joke. Uh, you hang a bit of shit on each other and everybody has a laugh. Nobody takes it too serious, you know, which is how it should be. Uh, Svici was excellent. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've never had, uh, never had smoked fish before. Um, it's really? great to see that you can get all your off cuts as well and, Whatever breed fish, you just chuck them in there and they all taste good mm. uh, with the cherry smoked uh, wood. Yeah, it's excellent. Awesome. Cheers, Lee. Unlike Lee, I haven't developed Alzheimer's. <laughs> I do remember yeah, no, the mate. course quite well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a question. It's a trick question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, not saying, yeah, uh, frothy is frothy. Yeah, froth. Frothy, frothy. I've been, um, I've been watching. I think um, everybody sort of progress. Uh, watching the young bloke outperform us and outshine us as he should, um, and uh, just learning new skills. I think I can't, I can't say that enough. Um, didn't like your ceviche, mate. I thought it was oh. rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was fantastic. Best meal of the night by far. Um, but they were all pretty good. Salt, salt and vinegar, flathead. That's a oh, that's a cracker too, mate. Come on, that's good. Um, 
Yeah, give that one a go if you if you haven't already. Salt and vinegar chips. Tell, and... tell them how to do it. Oh, well, hang on, Lee, you better tell them <laughs> if you I remember. Forget, um, <laughs> so I forget. I forget. <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, instead of panko crumbs, you use salt and vinegar chips, and, you know, it's yeah, mind-boggling. Go for it. Give it a crack. <laughs> um, yeah, the, it's it's been a frothy trip altogether, really. It's I think last night's the best night because we're all sitting around the fire having a good feed of fish and um, rewarding ourselves for our efforts over the last couple of days. It's been great. And I think before we go, there's one person here that needs to at least say hello because he's definitely warrants a, a, a visit to the mic. So you're on the spot here, you're in. Give everyone a shout out, eh? <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> well done. Well done, that man. Back to yeah, just So they know he's a real person. <laughs> That's a real yeah, good fun. note. Yeah. That is a real good note to not to um, to tie this podcast up. Well done, guys. Um, check out the show notes, noobspirit.com forward slash S3. I'm going to have a bunch of photos and videos from this trip up. Uh, hopefully someone got some photos of Julian's ceviche and I might have to get the breakdown of the recipe so everyone can have a look. Um, as as everyone kind of mentioned, great energy, fantastic group, uh, an absolute pleasure and a, and a cool trip. So all good. Stay tuned for another one in the future. Hey legends, as usual, this podcast and many more like it, powered by patron legends just like you. People that have gone out of their way just to throw a couple of dollars fuel in the Noob Spirit outboard and keep this sucker running. Really appreciate it. Check it out at patreon.com forward slash Noob Spirit. There's a whole bunch of different levels you can support at. Join about 40 other frothers up there. Again, putting fuel in the Noob Spirit outboard. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and maybe learned or relearned well, remembered learning a few things from your spearfishing journey. Uh, the next interview I haven't yet recorded, it's Caitlin and Shelby. They are the couple that run Neptune Spear and Dive in Mackay. These guys are absolute legends. They stock 99 spear recipes and definitely froth on the spearing life and serving their local Mackay spearfishing community. Come back for that. Otherwise, legends, I'm signing off for another uh, I hope you enjoyed this bloody cracker episode and uh, I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. See you, legends. Adreno stocks equipment for noobers. The gear you need for all things freediving and spearfishing. The Adreno spearfishing team froth on helping customers learn about the latest in spearfishing equipment, local diving, upcoming trips and events for Spiros of all levels of experience. There's no ego in there. You're going to meet cool people that love this spearing lifestyle as much as you do. Visit them in store in one of their huge mega stores around Australia. Chat to one of their friendly team members. Take advantage of the Noob Spiro discount code. Save $20 on every purchase over $200 in store, online. Easy savings. Pump in the code Noob Spiro if you're shopping online or in store, mention it's one of their friendly team members and save 20 bucks over 200. That's right, use the code Noob Spiro in store. Shop with Adreno, our partner for more than 200 episodes. Absolutely mint customer service. Specialty spearfishing equipment, elite spear gun performance components, unforgettable reliability. You want to find out where to buy this? Punchaneptonics.com and shop at the best US spearfishing store, Neptonics.com. Free shipping to the lower 48 when you spend over 199 and you can use the code NOOB10 to save 10%. This is your chance to save DOSH, buy deadly good gear and experience A-grade customer service. Will you shop with the best? Visit Neptonics.com, use the code NOOB10 to start shooting 35 pound muttons tomorrow. Actual performance may differ from advertisement. Please refer to terms and conditions to see if you're eligible to be a legend like Shrek. This advertisement was not even endorsed by Jerry and the team at Neotonics. Hoorah and God bless America.